Last year, when most investors were watching their stocks plummet, one Wall Street legend had an unfair advantage. He was identifying winning stocks with massive uptrends, like Riot Blockchain, before it shot up 10,000%, Digital Turbine, before it shot up 789%, Overstock.com, before it shot up 1,000%. This power gauge comes from the legendary Mark Chaikin. Right now, you can get a free in-depth look at how his power gauge system works. A way to type in any of the 4,000 different tickers and see exactly where the stock is most likely to go next in any type of market. Simply go to chakentrial.com for your free look. Again, that's chakentrial.com. Welcome to Making Money, folks. This is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. It's a big day. It's a special show. It's Fed Day. The Federal Reserve just raised interest rates for the first time since December 2018 by 25 basis points and now gives it a range of 0.25 to 0.5%. And we're going to talk about what the reaction is to the market right now today, how it's reacting. It just happened about four minutes ago. I'm going to talk about my thoughts of typically how the market does three, six, nine, 12 months afterwards and even longer. And then implications of how it's going to affect certain stocks and bonds and gold and Bitcoin and everything else. All that and more, everything you need to know about the Fed decision and how it's going to affect you coming up right now. Again, Matt McCall here. It's Fed Day. So it is the 16th of March, and I got all kinds of stuff down here watching what's going on. And so the Fed came out, as I just mentioned, uh, Jerome Powell came out with a uh, increase of 0.25%. So that takes the range, it was 0 to 0.25, and that range is 0.25 to 0.5. A uh, couple of big things here they talked about. Uh, they talked about the balance sheet reduction, which is now around $9 trillion, which really exploded uh, during the pandemic. They didn't say when they're going to reduce it, but they said that there's going to be a reduction at a coming meeting. Not a big surprise. We kind of knew that was going to happen, but they didn't come out yet. It probably won't be till maybe third quarter-ish, in my opinion. So something to keep an eye on, but nothing that really moving the market here right now. Um, there was one dissent. That means all the Fed chairmen uh, or governors, except for one, wanted the rate hike of 25 basis points. One dissented and wanted a hike of 50 basis points, so be a little more hawkish, as they call it. Um, you know, in December, uh, what they came out, and at that point, uh, they expected uh, to raise interest rates a few times. Let me give you the exact numbers. Uh, raise interest rates three times in uh, 2022, uh, three more times in 2023, and two more in 2024. Heading into the decision, the market priced in seven 25 basis point rate hikes. So basically, this meeting plus the next six meetings in this calendar year. So that would be a total, obviously, of 1.75%. You drop that in the middle. That's a, a goal at the end of the year of about 1.88% um, on the Fed funds rate. Now, the Fed came out and they said the same thing, uh, that they foresee seven rate hikes this year, 25 basis points at every meeting, the one today and the next six, again, taking it to the average between 1.75 and two, so we'll call that 1.88%. They also, looking at it 2023 and 2024, this is important, they talked about having four more rate hikes uh, with a target of 2.88% on the Fed funds rate. That is above what we call the neutral reading. The neutral reading is around 2.4%. If it goes above that, that's very hawkish. So that's spooking the market a bit. And I'll show you the markets here in one second. Uh, they also mentioned inflation. Uh, they believe inflation is going to come in this year at 4.3%, uh, about up 1.7% uh, from where it was. So they increased that as well. Obviously, it was what's going on in Ukraine. And uh, they, they didn't make really much mention of the Ukraine conflict. Uh, but at 2.30, it's uh, 2.07 now, 2.30, uh, there will be the press conference. So there'll be some uh, questions for uh, Chairman Powell at that point. So let me switch over this the S and P 500. This is the minute chart. Uh, so every little bar here is one minute, folks. You can see the market was rallying. Uh, we were up pretty big. It's already closed yesterday, but it was drifting down in the last hour or so. And then after the Fed decision came out, it fell, and uh, it, it fell. I believe in large part not to the fact that they talked about seven rate hikes this year, but about four more rate hikes in 2023 and 2024. 
That being said, uh, let, let's let's be real here, folks. Nobody knows what 2023 or 2024 is going to bring us as far as the economy, as far as the stock market, as far as geopolitical concerns, as far as inflation is concerned. There's so many unknowns. Nobody really knows where it's going to be uh, in two to three weeks, let alone two to three years. So I think that was really bold for them to say that. And I think they just wanted to come out and be extremely hawkish and extremely um, uh, strong in what they were doing and show the, the world that, OK, we were a little late. We probably should have raised interest rates a little bit earlier, but now we're coming out swinging. But again, that, that has hurt the market. The S&P is now only up a half a percent. And if I take a look at the NASDAQ, which is a little more tied uh, to interest rates because typically viewed as a tech-heavy index and typically tech stocks, it's, it's a generalization I don't always agree with, but this is how the market perceives it, that tech stocks are a little bit more uh, aggressive, a little bit more risky, and a lot of them are, are, have higher debt, need to borrow to fund their growth in the future. And therefore, borrowing costs will be more because as interest rates go up, borrowing costs go up at the same time. So again, I, I, I don't view it the same way, but we'll take a look at the Qs right here. This is a NASDAQ 100. It's still up 1.1%, but you can see it was above 338 a share. Now it's down to 331.50, the lowest that we've seen all day. So it's on a low of the session. Uh, right now for the Qs. We'll look at the the long or the longer term chart, daily trade, and see this is today's action at the low of the day. So typically after the Fed comes out and actually makes a move, we're going to see uh, the market be extremely volatile um, from now to the close. We could close down 2% or up 3%, and it wouldn't surprise me. We're just kind of digesting right now, uh, looking out. Another thing we want to look at is the interest rates, obviously, for the 10-year. Uh, you take a look at the yield in a 10-year. Uh, right now, it's about 2.2%. Uh, this is the highest level. I'll zoom out here for a moment and show you. The highest level that we've seen on the 10-year uh, going all the way back here to uh, June of 2019. So uh, nearly three years, uh, the highest level we've seen on the yield on the 10-year. And what that means uh, for people at home, and, and what I want to get into here in a minute is, how all this affects you, you know, it all, you get the headlines, I just shared the headlines with you, but you all know, the goal of this show is three things. We want to have fun, we want to educate you, and we want to make money. And to do that, we need to get across how this is affecting you. We don't care about how it affects the world, I mean, we do, but we don't. How it affects you and your money and your investments, uh, your life in general, your money in general. So one thing is, you know, you have the uh, ten-year going up. So as interest rates go up, bond prices fall. So if you're in a bond fund or a bond ETF, and I'm going to pull up here TLT, that is a 20-plus year Treasury bond ETF, one of the largest bond ETFs, is now at the lowest level. I have to zoom out here to see how low it is. The lowest level. I have to zoom out even more. The lowest level that we've seen going back again to that you know, early mid 2019. Um, so year to date, I mean, people get into these bond funds thinking, oh, yeah, everything's going to be uh, groovy here and not have to worry about anything. It ended the year around 143. We're down to 131 and change. So we're down about 8%. And at the same time, uh, you know, the dividend you're bringing in is less than 3%. So you're losing pretty big money uh, if you're looking at this. And if rates keep going up, this fund and all bond funds, not all, majority of bond funds will fall. Some might be might be tied to inflation, or, uh, you know, other types of uh, uh, more niche vehicles within the fixed income realm. So I don't want to say all of them, but most that you're going to be owning uh, will be going down. Uh, so that's that's one way it can affect you. And remember, folks, I talked about this several times. I've talked about this in the past where. When I talk to investors, you know, I, I sold my money management firm, so I don't have that anymore. So I'd always talk to investors every day, but I still talk to investors and colleagues and family and friends and whoever. And th there's this per perception that still doesn't leave that bonds are the safest thing in the world. They're not, because as you can see here, uh, when it comes to bonds, they can get hit. And in a rising interest rate environment, they will get hit hit. And you're seeing it right now. You're seeing what happened. So just, again, just keep that in mind. Uh, let's take a look at Bitcoin because I think it's interesting to see what Bitcoin's doing. Bitcoin right now is trading uh, just above 40,000. And it looks like here, you know, in the last 24 hours, it's up like 2%. Uh, so it's, it's, it's had a pretty nice move here. It's just, yeah, just around 40,000 right now, about 1.5% in the last 24 hours. So it's actually holding on pretty well. 
The other one we want to take a look at, obviously, as I'll pull it, I'll pull it up for you in a moment. We'll take a look at gold. We'll take a look at GLD, which is the uh, ETF that tracks the price of gold. And here we go. Here's a chart. Down about two tenths of percent right now. But let's zoom into the minute. Let's see what happened. You can see here it actually shot up after that. It shot up and now it's drifting a little bit lower. So again, I, I don't care what happens for minutes or even days. I look at a bigger trend. But I just want to show everybody how crazy uh, the market is on Fed Day because you will have wild swings. So if I go back here to the S&P 500, you can see that continues to fall. You know, at the low of the day as well. It's only up two tenths right now as well. So again, at the low of the day, as interest rates go up, gold is actually, you know, not doing too well here. Maybe you thought that would do a little bit better, uh, but gold is down four tenths of percent on the uh, on the day. And now, as you can see, uh, after a, an initial rally based off the Fed decision, uh, gold is uh, pulling back here as well. So. How else, you know, really is this going to affect you? Because I, I think that's really important. You know, keep in mind uh, that uh, let's talk about stocks first. So if you look at the rate height cycles, when you have multiple rate hikes, which we're going to have uh, since 1946, the six months after the first rate hike, the market averages a gain of 1.3%. In normal years, where it's just you take all periods into consideration, it's an increase of 5.1%. Next 12 months, an increase of 4.6%. All, 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 uh, all years, 92 And then 18 months, up 10.3%. And all years, up 138 So it does lag the market a little bit. But I'll tell you, you know, I'm more of a longer-term investor. I look at 18 months, 13.8 versus 10.3 you're still making 10% in a year and a half. So I don't know where else in the world you're going to be doing that unless you own your own business or some type of very niche investment. <clears throat> so uh, again, I, 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 they're not the greatest numbers. It shouldn't be jumping around, but it does tell me that it doesn't mean the market's dead. It doesn't mean that the stocks are going down. It just means that the overall, however, there will be certain sectors and certain trends in there uh, that will do well. And that's that's obviously important to uh, to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is, you know, the, the, the NASDAQ hit bear market territory uh, last week. And to me, it's priced in uh, these rate hikes. As I mentioned, the market, according to the numbers before this came out, was pricing in seven interest rate hikes. The Fed came out and said, we're shooting for seven interest rate hikes this year, 25 basis points each. So uh, I, I believe a lot of this really bad news uh, that we have here has been priced in the fact that it's gone into a bear market already. I, I just don't I don't see, you know, what the big deal is, I, honestly. So also, it's going to affect you with um, higher borrowing costs for you, not just companies. So if you're going out to get a loan, uh, uh, whether it be a, an auto loan, a personal loan, a business loan, uh, you're borrowing money for a mortgage for your house, it's going to push up borrowing rates, which is going to affect you directly. But there's a caveat here, again, that people tend to ignore. If this actually works like the Fed thinks it's going to work, and inflation falls from a 40-year high down to a respectable level, that's going to save you quite a bit of money on everyday purchases, from filling the gas tank uh, to going to the grocery store, etc. So there's a give and take there that I think you really have to take into consideration. Um, so, so please keep that in mind because as much as, yes, the borrowing costs will be more, but if you're not borrowing anything, uh, you don't have uh, some type of revolving debt like a credit card, um, you know, to me, I love debt and I think debt's good. You know, Susie Orman, Dave Ramsey and them, you know, I think Dave Ramsey uh, is what he is, but he, he just, it's too simplified. You don't, I mean, not everybody should pay off their debt. Uh, when you can borrow cheaply, you should borrow as much as you can, as long as you have something good to put into it, whether it be a business, a home, a second home, uh, and some type of investment opportunity. Whereas if you have uh, credit cards with interest rates, double digits or more, yeah, you should be paying that down first before you put money into the market. Because it's a very simple way to look at it. If you're paying 12% uh, a year on, on your credit card, then you have to make at least more than 12% uh, in your investments to make it worth to borrow that money. If you're only making eight, that's terrible. You're only making eight of your money. Use that and put down 12, pay it down to 12. That being said, if you're borrowing money, let's say you have a mortgage locked in at 3%, don't pay off that. That's fine. That's good. That's cheap money. You're not probably never going to see that low again. Lock that in and then go and put your money in the market, which I just mentioned, even during rising inflation or sorry, rising interest rate environments, uh, the market is still up on average 12 months after the day, which is today, 9.2%. So if you're borrowing at three, you're netting out 6.2%. That's a hell of a return. 
So again, not all debt is bad. Credit card debt with double digits, that is bad. I mean, but again, I'm not saying you're a bad person. People get into situations where they have to take it on sometimes. And if you do, that's okay. But as you start coming in extra money, the first thing you should do is be paying that down, folks. Don't be paying down your home if you're only owing 3%, 3.5%. That's, that's asinine to me. My mom always asked me about it, and I, I said, you're crazy. Do not pay it. But it's an old school way of thinking. I get it because we don't like to have debt. You know, other than my mortgage, I have zero debt. And I, I again, like, because I'm not borrowing on a credit card. Um, and I, but if I could find something, a, a new business to start, I would borrow and right now at low if I didn't have cash sitting on the sidelines. I also want to take a look over here, pull up the charts again. Uh, these are just a couple of um, uh, sector ETFs. Just kind of show you what sectors are performing right now. Uh, this is a lithium ETF. This is this is up really big because uh, some of the Chinese lithium stocks were up huge overnight. Um, SMH, that is the semiconductors. But again, you can see well off the highs of the day. Uh, KRE holding up really well. And this is the regional banks ETF. And keep in mind, regional banks typically do well in a rising interest rate environment because a lot of their money is made by uh, loaning out money. So when there is a larger uh, spread between what they're borrowing at and what they can loan it out at, uh, the money, uh, they make more money, the margins increase. So typically when interest rates go up, they can increase those margins and increase the difference between what they're borrowing for and what they're lending out to you. And therefore the bottom line gets bigger. And that's why you're seeing uh, the KRE uh, hold up really well. Retail, uh, XRT is actually holding up 1.9%. Transportation having a nice day and that's still well off the lows of the day, up 1.9%. Uh, here's an interesting one. This is wood. This is the timber and forestry uh, uh, ETF. You can see it's it's not far from the highs. And again, up nicely, typically does very well in inflationary periods. Uh, XLF is a large financial. The JP Morgan's Bank of America's of the world. Again, typically do well in rising interest rate environments. That's why you see that up. Here's a bit of a shocker. Uh, this is the biotech ETF, still up 1.6%, where typically in a rising interest rate environment, where people want to get away from what they perceive as risky, uh, they, at, at sectors that they perceive needs to borrow more money, which a lot of times that's biotech because you have to put so much money in R&D before something gets approved, if it ever gets approved. Um, so it's fascinating to see that up. Now let's go down to the bottom of the barrel here. And this is extremely fascinating too. This is GDX, the gold miners ETF, the per worst performer on my list, down 2.25%. If it closes here, it's a new two-week closing low. I told you up here, I, I said I, commodities up here are a bubble and they, and they keep going down. Uh, what else is getting hit? Aerospace defense down about 1.3, utilities down 1.3. Uh, and I'll tell you why utilities are down. Because utilities, a lot of the reason people buy utilities is for the yield, for the dividend yield, for the income that pays out. Well, as interest rates go up, dividend paying stocks are not as attractive. Because, you, because there's that difference between what they call the risk-free rate, and that's uh, the, the money that you lend to the government and get, and get payments back, versus the riskier rate of actually investing in a company that pays a dividend. So as the risk-free rate goes up, that spread narrows, which makes the utilities, and um, another one is, which is down here would be the REITs, the Real Estate Investment Trust, down about three tenths of a percent. They're known for that as well. Uh, and then you know the other, the fourth worst performer here is gold down about uh, eight tenths of a percent now. So again, you think gold would do well in this situation, uh, but it is not folks. It is definitely lagging right here. So yeah, I mean, this is, uh, it's pretty fascinating what, what we're seeing going on here. And let me go back to the S&P. I just wanna see if we're getting a bit of a bounce out of it. We're still near the lows of the days. We're up about three, three tenths of a percent right now on the S&P 500. Uh, as I mentioned, just a few things, you know, again, Fed Powell, Fed Chairman Powell didn't say too much about Ukraine, just what you thought he would say. Uh, inflation, they raised their estimates on inflation. Uh, they talked about the balance sheet reducing at some point in a coming meeting. They didn't say which one, though. Uh, and I talked about, obviously, I, I think the the uh, NASDAQ being down in bear market territory this week uh, prices in the, the seven rate hikes potentially this year. A lot could happen, though, where we don't even get the seven. I mean, you, you don't know what's going to happen with the economy, with uh, the geopolitical things that are going on over in Ukraine and China and everywhere else. Um, so I, I really think that, that we look at all this. And to me, it's, it's this is kind of what we should have expected. I think, again, the one reason we don't see higher gains and we saw a sell off from the levels prior to this uh, was based on the fact the 2023 to 2024 outlook where they're pricing in or saying potentially four interest rate hikes totaling 1% in 2023, 2024. Again, that's so far out that I, I think it's almost impossible uh, to do that, uh, to even think about it. So um, yeah, let's take that with what it is. 
I do want to show you one more chart because on yesterday's show, what did we talk about? The Chinese internet stocks and how beat up they were. And I showed you four stocks and I said, my goodness, they are so cheap down here. So if anybody listened to, to that show and bought, man, oh man, I talked about this ETF, KWeb. This is an ETF of very large Chinese companies. It is up 30% in one day. I mean, it's, still, it's, it's a blip on the screen, but I was saying how cheap they were. And, and the stocks I talked about yesterday was Alibaba, you know, up 28% today, still near the high today. Uh, Baidu, B-I-D-U, up 27% near the high of the day. Uh, JD.com up 31% near the high of the day. I mean, look at that bounce back. And then Tencent holding T-C-E-H-Y up 26%. And some of the others that are moving here are just fascinating to me. Um, Pinduoduo, which is uh, basically an online retail company, 48% uh, gain, was up over 50% at one point. And I think Didi, D-I-D-I, -I, which is uh, kind of like a, a ride share over there, like an Uber type uh, company in China, up 44.44%. Make a wish, four, fours in a row. So you're seeing some amazing moves uh, when it comes to these Chinese stocks. And I, I, I never would have bet that they would have bounced this much. So if anybody got lucky enough to buy yesterday, pat yourself on the back. I don't know if it continues. Uh, I do know they're still, even at these levels, are historically cheap. Um, so I, I somebody posted, I think it was yesterday, that I think it was a PE ratio, the price of sales, I think it's PE ratio. Uh, Alibaba was lower than the P ratio of Clorox, you know, the big boring cleaning company, which was again, pretty damn fascinating. So just to give you an idea, uh, we have now, um, look at interest rates, the 30 year fixed, uh, sorry, the mortgage rates, 4.44. We have the 10 year yield now at 2.24%. So it continues to go up, obviously with, I, I think the thinking that we're gonna have more interest rates going into 2023, 2024 pushing it up. The Dow's down 20 points. The S&P's up 8, 2 tenths percent. NASDAQ's still holding on to 115 point gain, but it's only 0.9% near the low to session. So everything is near the low to session. Again, it's, it's, I find it kind of crazy because you would think with what just came out and interest rates going up, you would think that you would see the, the tech heavy NASDAQ begin and hit harder, but it's still up 9 tenths percent versus the Dow, which is the old stodgy companies down slightly down to like 0.1%. But man, oh man, uh, uh, what, a, what a market we have here, folks. Uh, again, I'm a long-term investor, but I thought it'd be important to kind of go through these numbers with you as they were happening, uh, just showing you how the market was reacting to this. And, you know, it's, it's been wild. And we can close anywhere. We still have an hour and 34 minutes. Uh, we have General Powell, or I keep going General Powell, um, uh, Chairman Powell coming up in four minutes. It's 2.26 East Coast time right now. So I'm going to get off here, listen to that. Uh, I might put some notes in in my dailies that go out. Uh, we put those out uh, every Monday through Friday. I write those up. Uh, so I'll definitely comment on that. But for now, we're going to leave it here. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, and we're pushing to do some more uh, really live shows in the future. So hopefully we get to that very, very soon where we can take your questions live, just like we're doing on radio. So folks, again, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for tuning into the Fed Day. Hope everything went the way you wanted it to. Have a good rest of your week. Enjoy the weekend. Be safe. Be happy. And again, we're here for three things. Educate you, have fun, and make some money. Speaking of that, that was Making Money, and I'm Matt McClough. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.